It will be sunny during the day, followed by increasing clouds starting during the evening. Well, how nice of you to tell me. Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And as I put in the knock code in order to unlock the LG G3, here we are. I wanted to show you some of the new software features that are here. They all pretty much start with the word smart. You have the smart notify, which you saw in the intro already. You have also the smart cleaner, which I'll get to into into a little bit. And then we have the smart keyboard, which is the one you're probably going to use the most. So we're going to take a look at that first. So here's the LG keyboard. You have some pretty typical settings here already. Path input is the one that I always turn on now because the swiping method of typing and all of these keyboards happens to be pretty good already. And the LG keyboard is no exception. But the smart capabilities are found in this setting right here, which is the keyboard height and layout. So we'll go ahead and jump into there. And we have the bottom row keys, which is something that I've already set up because I use a comma a lot. You just get this one button right here and you get to drag it up and select what symbol that button will be made for specifically. I do use the comma a lot and I would rather not hold the period button in order to create the comma. So there it is. And then finally, what we have here is the keyboard height. Now, the keyboard height is something that is quite useful for people who maybe want to swipe around, but having the keyboard very small doesn't make it very ideal. Having it very large does make it more ideal, but it does take up a lot of the screen real estate and it might not be something that you want to use all the time. So I, I kind of put it somewhere in the middle. And then from there, I should be able to type quite easily. Oop. Easily, there you go. So that makes it pretty pretty simple. You'll be able to change it and really cater it to what you want. So that does it there. And I did change the keyboard theme to black from white. That's what the white keyboard looks like. This is the black keyboard. You do have the one-handed operation right here that we've shown before where you can have the keyboard on one side of the screen or on the other side of the screen to make it easier. But when you already have the keyboard height on a, um, well enough on a screen just like this that is actually easy to reach from one side to the other, I think you would be all right without having to use that one-handed operation too often. So here we are in the general area. Let me just give you a quick look around the settings menu. And here is the smart cleaning. If you click on that, it'll start to scan the phone for any temporary files or any downloaded files that, they, that it thinks you should be able to delete without really um, changing a whole lot about the experience. This third one down here, the idle apps, well, I've only had the phone for a little while now, so obviously the idle apps is not something that's going to come up uh, fairly often at the moment. It's only when I have a lot of different applications that I haven't used in, let's say, over a month or so. But as you can see here, I can already free up almost half a gigabyte of uh, of storage here if I were to clean up the temporary files. So if I were to tap below to clean that space, I could click here and it will start computing the various types of files that are there. And here we are, the apps cache is where a lot of it is. So if I wanted to clean it up, that would take away the cache. You might make some of the applications have to load those, those specific items again, but ultimately we would save a little bit of space. And maybe if you have um, Google Play Music and you wanted to put more music on here rather than having to stream it, then that might help you out a little bit. Now, one thing about the idle apps, see idle for one month. One thing about the idle apps that I will say is if you happen to have bloatware on your version of the LG G3, like for example, I have all of these Korean applications right here, chances are the app idle area is not going to tell you that you need to uninstall those because well, for all intents and purposes, they need to stay there. So that might be one little downside of the, of the uh, smart cleaning and that it's not going to really show you a way of, let's say removing the bloatware because obviously that stuff has to quote unquote remain in there. And now Finally, we have the Smart Notify, or the Smart Notice, as it is called in the widgets area, which I'll show you real quick. And yes, it is just a widget. It's not necessarily a bar that shows up anywhere. It's just a Smart Notice widget. And you can have it set up so that the cards show up in your notification panel, but for the most part, it's a widget. If you don't happen to use widgets a whole lot on your home screens, this might not be very useful for you because you prefer a cleaner look, but at least the Smart Notice is not a very uh, intrusive looking application. It does take up that part of the grid. It goes right over to the bezel. So it does look pretty utilitarian in its function and it also in its design. So ultimately what the Smart Notice is, it's you'll get a bunch of cards that come down if, uh, if there was more than one card, but most of the time you're only gonna have one notification and it will most likely have to do with the weather. And here's the reason why. If I go into the settings of the widget, um, you can make the cards show up in your notification dropdown, but here are the different notifications you get. You do get a few people ones, like for example, you get a number from a, you get a call from a number that is not in your phone book. Uh, a bunch of times it will tell you, do you wanna add that person to your phone book? If you have 
a missed call. It will show you a callback reminder on there and show a button for you to be able to press immediately in order to call them back. And then finally, you have birthday notifications, which is the one I never see. <laughs> I've had quite a few friends in the past week or so have birthdays, but I've never gotten a notification about it. These are the ones that you're going to see more often than not. The weather alerts uh, are the ones that you'll see pretty much all the time, especially since you have that weather application right on the top left of that widget, and it'll just give you in a nicely worded fashion, um, just a little bit of a hint or rather a tip uh, according to whatever the weather will be, that maybe you should bring a sweater because the weather's going to change change or, or an umbrella because it's going to rain. And then after that, when your battery gets down to, let's say about 30%, you'll see the battery saver. Now the battery saver will pretty much just tell you that your battery is getting low. So make sure you need to turn on the, you need to make sure to turn on the power saving mode. It only comes up with a certain number of notifications. They might not all be very useful. What I do hope is like Google Now, which didn't really start off with a whole lot of functionality and then eventually grew into what it is now, that the Smart Notify will grow into something a little bit more robust and will be more than just a nicely worded way of telling you what the weather is. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage, including my upcoming review of this very phone right here that I'm having a great time with. And after that, check out the content from my colleagues in Android. And then drop us some likes, subscribe if you haven't already, and then keep it tuned to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.